Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about the process of dividing Maclaurin series, which is not an easy thing to do because dividing polynomials is never an easy thing to do. So let's get started and find um, an idea as to how we can actually go about doing this. So normally what you have is you have a numerator over a denominator and that equals a quotient. That's what division is. Um, and so what we can do is we can rearrange that and turn it into a multiplication problem uh, so that the denominator times the quotient would equal the numerator. Now we're not dealing with numbers here, so we're dealing with polynomials. So what does that look like? I'm going to call the numerator n of x, the denominator d of x, and the quotient q of x so that my numerator over denominator equals quotient becomes n of x over d of x equals q of x. And I can rearrange that as well as long as d of x is not zero. And I can get d of x times q of x equals n of x, just like I rearranged the original uh, division problem at the top. All right, so that's kind of the idea. Let's talk about an example where there are no Maclaurin series involved. It's just algebra. We're taking a polynomial and we're dividing it by another polynomial. And just to show you that it's not an easy thing to do um, unless you rearrange it as a multiplication problem. So the numerator is x squared minus 5x plus 4, and the denominator is x minus 1. So that's what I'm calling n of x and d of x, respectively. And I know that the answer is going to be linear, because if you look at the degrees, the degree on top of that fraction is 2, the degree on the bottom is 1. And so when you divide a quadratic by a linear, you're going to get another linear. So I know that my quotient is going to be some constant a0 plus another constant, a1 times x. Um, there might be a remainder, um, but when we're dividing these types of polynomials, we're not really interested in a remainder per se because we are dividing Maclaurin polynomials that go on forever. So um, all we're going to do is we're going to approximate. So I know that from before, uh, d of x times q of x equals n of x. So I have my d of x, I have my n of x, and I've written an expression for my unknown q of x. So I fill those in. All right, so I've got two polynomials multiplied together equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute, um, use distributive property on those parentheses. So what I get is a1 times x squared plus a0x minus a1x minus a0 is going to give me that uh, polynomial on the right. So now that two polynomials are equal, the only way that's possible is if the coefficients of the same degree of x are equal. So I'm going to be comparing the coefficients of x squared, setting them equal, the coefficients of x, setting them equal, and then the constant, setting them equal, and then hopefully I will get values for a0 and a1, and I will know what q of x actually is. So if I look at the constant terms, um, negative a0 on the left equals positive 4 on the right. That would mean that a0 equals negative 4. So I have half the job is done. I know what my constant term is. It's negative 4. All right. And now if I look at my x squared terms, um, the left has a1 x squared. And on the right hand side, all I have is 1 x squared. So that would mean that a1 equals 1. So that means that my q of x, that, that function that I didn't know, is negative 4 plus x. Now, yes, I could have figured that out using factoring and all of that. But my whole point here was to show you the process with something that we could do another way, just so that I knew that my answer was right. I knew that if I divided that, I was going to get uh, x minus 4. And this just kind of proves that the process is going to work. It's going to give us a good answer so that when we do things that are more complicated, um, I can feel a little better about the accuracy of my answer. So now we're doing this with Maclaurin series. Um, we're starting with sine x and cosine x, and we're going to write the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for tangent of x. So I know that tangent of x is sine x over cosine x. So my numerator is going to be the uh, Maclaurin series for sine x, and my denominator is going to be my Maclaurin series for cosine x. So I've written those there. And so my quotient is going to be just something uh, up to x to the fifth. I need the first three non-zero terms. And I'm noticing that both the numerator and the denominator don't have every exponent of x in them. So I'm kind of going a little bit further than I might need to. 
uh, to get three non-zero terms. It would be better if I knew the degree, but sometimes you're not told that. So I'm kind of preparing to have three non-zero terms. All right, so I rewrite uh, that quotient equals numerator over denominator. I'm rewriting that as denominator times quotient equals numerator, or d of x times q of x equals n of x. Um, I have expressions for all of them. It's just that q of x has a bunch of unknowns that I'm going to have to figure out. So it's rewritten there. I plugged everything in, and now um, I've got a big distributive property on the left-hand side. So I have to deal with that. So I'm going to set up a table to multiply. Um, if you watch the video that I did for multiplication, it's set up in a very similar way. Uh, so I've got Q of X, which has all of my A's in it, that is along the top, and D of X is going to go down the left-hand column term by term. So the first term in DX is going to be 1, so if I take 1 and multiply it by everything in that yellow row, I'm going to get the exact same thing. So that's what it looks like. The next term in d of x is going to be negative x squared over 2. So I'm going to take negative x squared over 2 and multiply it by all of those yellow terms at the top, and I get terms that look like this. All right, and then the last term that I'm going to concern myself with in d of x is x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And if I multiply that by uh, every yellow term in the top row, it's going to look like this. All right, so I did that so that I could apply the distributive property to both um, expressions that were on the left. And now hopefully I can combine them and uh, collect the like terms. So d of x times q of x is going to be that constant of a0. So I've got my constant term. Now I'm looking for x terms. And I've just got one of them. It's a1x. Then I look for x squared terms. And I've got two of them. So I'm going to write those in parentheses just to organize. I've also got two x to the third terms, so I'm going to combine those. I've got three x to the fourth terms, so I'm putting all of those in parentheses. And I've got three x to the fifth terms, and I think that's where I'm going to stop, because I think um, after working this out before, I really didn't need to go beyond x to the fifth. Now, you might want to, just to be sure, um, but uh, just, just try and play around with it a little bit. If you feel like you didn't get three non-zero terms, then you need to add more columns and more rows until you get what the question asks for. All right, so that is the polynomial that I got from the distributive property before. And on the right-hand side, I've still got the Maclaurin series for sine of x, which was my numerator to begin with. So now all I'm doing is comparing the stuff on the left with the stuff on the right and I'm comparing coefficients. So if I look, I've got a constant term of a to the zero on the left, but I have no constant term on the right. That must mean that a zero is zero. Then I look at the next term. I've got a one x on the left, and I've got x on the right, one x on the right. And so that must mean that a one is one. I do the same thing with the x squared terms. Now, luckily, there it seems like there's two unknowns um, in that red circle on the left, but I actually know what a0 is already, so I just need to figure out what a2 is, and that turns out to be zero as well. And I keep going through this process, um, and as I know more and more values of the a0, a1, a2, and so on, it's easier for me to figure out the missing one. So now I know that a to the third is one third. Now remember, I'm trying to find three non-zero terms, so anytime I get a zero as one of my missing coefficients, that's not going to be a non-zero term. So I keep going until I get three coefficients that are not zeros. So I haven't done that yet, um, but I do have a value for a1, a3, and I keep going. Um, a to the four, that's going to be zero, so I need to keep going. And then once I get to a to the fifth, I've got my third and final non-zero coefficient. So I've got the three non-zero coefficients that I need and I'm ready to rewrite my polynomial. So my polynomial is going to be x plus one-third x to the third plus two-fifteenths x to the five. So that would be my uh, Maclaurin series that would approximate tangent of x. It's a little bit of work, it's a lot of work, um, but it's a process very similar to multiplication and uh, just comparing coefficients when you're done. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.